Hello, you seven is Mrs. Taylor. I wanted to share with you five methods to create the illusion of depth and distance in a picture. And I will also demonstrate the task that we want you to do today's lesson. The first one for creating the illusion of depth and distance is perspective. And we had to go one point perspective in the lessons just before Christmas. And if I just demonstrate on this image here, one point perspective, so I'll just change the colour of that to something a bit brighter. And um, started off with a horizon line. You can't quite see the horizon line because the picture's been drawn over it, but the horizon line's there where the land meets the sky. And we would have a vanishing point where we would draw orthogonal lines from. So the artist has drawn the grass going backwards at that angle. The trees have been drawn going backwards at that angle. And this all gives you the illusion of depth and distance in a landscape, or in this case, a cityscape or an urban landscape. And the tops of the houses, even the windows, are drawn on the angle that points down towards the vanishing point and the cars too. That all builds up this image and creates an illusion of things going backwards. The second way, tone. So paler tones and colours are used in the background, stronger ones in the foreground. And this is what I'm going to ask you to do for your um, lesson. If I just colour pick those mountains at the back, that's quite a neutral colour and quite a paler tone. And as I come forward, you'll see that the colours, hang on, the colours start to brighten. And then when we get to the foreground, there's stronger colours. The artist has used stronger colour, more saturated colour in the foreground to give this illusion of things being closer to you. The third way, textures such as plant details, rocks and grass shown in detail in the front and less clear in the back. So you can see here on this image, the flower, the flower picture, and again, I'll just, I'll just put it in green for now, make that a bit smaller. The flower at the front is drawn in more detail. You can see the petals, but as it goes further back, even if I zoom in, the flowers have been drawn in, in less detail to give the illusion of things going back. The fourth one, bigger and smaller. So artists would draw things in the foreground larger than similar things in the background. And this hay field, where that, all the hay bales are, is a good example of that. So even if I just trace around this hay bale, and just copy it a second, move that, you'll see if I put it, hang on, if I put it next to the one in the background, you can see there's a, a big difference. And that all gives the illusion of depth and distance of things being in front and behind and further away because it is only a flat piece of paper. So there are all these kind of different tricks that you can use to create depth and distance in a landscape. And the fifth one, overlapping. Buildings are drawn so that they overlap and block out part of the buildings behind. And this is illustrated nicely in this picture. If I draw, hang on, I need to put my brush back on, just over, I mean, that building here would come behind this front building. It would probably, it'd probably come down to there, actually. And the artist has shown that they overlap. So if I, hang on, let's colour pick that colour. This building overlaps that shape and that's creating the illusion that that's behind it. So you're overlapping things. You're drawing things in the foreground and overlapping things in the background. Right, there are the five different methods of creating depth and distance in a landscape that I'm going to show you but so we're going to focus on the tone one and because you're all at home we'll have a go at using household household resources to draw it and coffee 
would be fine. Let me just check that you can see what I'm doing from the camera. I might need to pull it up a little bit or move it over. Hang on. If I pull it up slightly, hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. That's better. Right, so we'll leave the coffee uh, for a minute, but we'll draw it out first. Now, if you're painting on the table like I am, you don't want to get coffee on the table. Now, the best thing would be to put something underneath it, but I'm going to be careful. So I can shout at myself later if I get coffee on the table. Best thing to do is give yourself a couple of millimetres border. Don't bother using a ruler, just to break up the page and you can start drawing your hills. So I could have a hill in the foreground and just a few lines to suggest that these hills are overlapping each other and we're looking backwards and there's, we're looking back into the distance. There, so I could, and that's all I really want to do for that. To create the different tones, we need a colour and we can use coffee. And if I put some coffee granules on to a plate there, I've got warm water, just because cold water wasn't really melting the coffee very well. It was doing it, but not, not very well. I would start off making the, making the darker tone, and then you can dilute it out, as I'll show you in a minute. So it takes a minute or two. You don't want gobs of coffee on your work. And just there you go. That's yeah, dissolving well. You can use anything you want to. If you've got food colouring in the cupboard, you could have a go at it with food colouring. I think that will do it. I might still have a few. I'm going to wash that out. Now for the lighter tones, the paler tones, and I'm hoping you all remember. Do I put them in the foreground or the background? The paler tones go in the background. Hopefully you remember that. So I'm just going to mix a really, really watered down version of this coffee. And I can barely see it. And I'm just going to paint in the sky. I can just faintly see that I've, I've, I've got colour onto the paper. And you can see giving yourself a border, it gives you a frame that you don't go over. Now, I'm going to put a slight amount of coffee in from what I've mixed. A bit more water, I think. And then I'm going to paint in the background hills. And the paler tones, the effect, it's supposed to push it away in your eye. Deceive your eye into thinking that it's further away. And I'm... Gradually, I'm going to just add more and more coffee as I come towards the foreground. If you've got paints at home, you can do this with paints too. But it's, it's kind of nice to experiment with different media as well. And a nice big sized brush, a small brush would, would do it, but it would just take me longer. And now look, I've started to put a bit more coffee on and it's creating a darker tone. A bit more water, a bit more coffee. You can work back into this as well. The best thing to do is not put too much on to start with. If you do need to make it darker, you can. If you, if you need to make it lighter, you're gonna struggle. Right, yeah, bit. get rid of that coffee bit. I'm heading towards the front, so I want to make my colour stronger and I want to make it a darker tone so I can put less, dilute it less with the water. Okay. And for the last one, I'm going to get as much coffee on it as I can without all the bits. I can still see all the bits there and I can put, make it the darkest I possibly can in the foreground. Now if you want to challenge yourself once you've done this, 
and add in some more drawing and painting about the different ways you can add depth and distance into a landscape. For example, you could put some big flowers in the foreground. You could even put trees here and then they get smaller and smaller. You could even put a house in the foreground and then another house but smaller in the background. You can use your imagination, but everybody should be at least having a go at this method of creating depth and distance in a landscape. So stronger colours in the foreground, darker tones in the foreground and getting lighter and lighter and lighter towards the back. There you go. Have fun with that. Upload your work to Teams and I'll, I'll look forward to seeing what you've achieved. Bye, you seven.